If you want to start releasing more GLP-1, eat more nutrient-dense foods. I mean, the reason why nearly every study that looks at calorically identical diets, one being highly processed and one being whole foods, you'll see that people that eat whole food diets eat less. It's because they are satiated. It's not that they're eating more calories, that they're more nutrient dense, so they release more GLP-1 because they're more satiated. So like when I started eating a ton of my meat bowls every day, I was so satisfied that it's essentially kind of doing the same thing as a GLP-1. Yeah, if you eat a bowl of meat every day, um, then you're gonna be very satisfied. First of all, their meat's very nutrient dense. It has all, all the essential amino acids. It has all the essential fatty acids. So, um, and it has, uh, you know, it's solid, has a solid amount of calories. So when you eat meat, you're very satiated. You release a lot of GLP-1. You're not only, you're not only satiated, you're satiated longer, Yep. right? Whereas, so it's not just calories in, calories out, because if you eat a highly processed meal with the same exact calories as that bowl of meat, you're very quickly going to be hungry again because you didn't get the nutrient density, right? That, that there's, that, you know, when you lack nutrients, you lack the production of GLP-1, which tells you that you're satiated. You mentioned though, there's another side of GLP-1 that you don't like. So the side that I don't like is because is the, is the side where we got fat. We don't stop bathing our cellular biology in the toxic soup. So we don't eliminate seed oils. We don't eliminate the processed foods. We don't el eliminate... Um, basically the, 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 the fake foods, we just eat less of them because we're taking this injection. So my, my beef is not necessarily with the GLP ones. My beef is with, we should be talking to these clients or patients, um, or, you know, heavy set people. And we should say, this is what got you there. Let's use the GLP one, but at the same time, let's make these dietary and lifestyle um, um, changes. Let's try to migrate you to a whole foods diet. You know, and and what's what's so fascinating is, you know, dieting shouldn't necessarily be dogmatic. If you actually look at the at the longevity research, like what Dr. Walter Longo is doing out of um, USC, if you look at the Blue Zone research, you won't find any continuity between diets, right? So it's not keto, carnivore, paleo, pescatarian, vegan, vegetarian you know, raw food, it's whole foods, right? I mean, if you go to Sardinia, one of the highest carbohydrate consumptions in the world, one of the longest life expectancies. If you go to Singapore, they have one of the highest meat consumptions per capita, one of the longest life expectancies. In the Mediterranean, very high fat consumption, very high fatty oils, lots of olive oils, lots of fatty satisfying. fish. Everything's satisfying. So the point is they're all whole foods huh. is what I'm saying. It's interesting. The continuity was that they were all whole foods. There's not one blue zone with highly processed diets. So my issue with the GLP ones is not with the GLP one itself. It's like, why are we, why, why did we become morbidly obese and type two diabetic? Probably because we're eating a very highly processed diet.